What's going on, the Nova Squad? My name is Nova. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna be watching some Shane Gill's live action in Austin. Uh, this is gonna be his stand-up comedy video. So um, this is gonna be a 48-minute long uh, video. Everything, as you guys can actually see. Uh, I thought about doing a one-parter and a two-parter, but I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna just like react to the whole entire thing instead of just like you know just like do doing a half and then like, trying to like figure out where 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 what's gonna be the, the half point. So. We could be doing that, and then, uh, yeah, I'm actually am excited. Everything I've actually seen the comment section. Everyone says this is one of his best uh, stand-ups he he's ever done. So uh, yeah, without further ado, here we go. I remind you, I was thinking about the first time like Congress had to come up with age of consent. That had to be like the powdered wigs and stuff. That had to be a rough day for the fellas. It's like some guy coming up first, like, from Rhode Island, 12. And everyone's like, ew, ew. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> I, I don't know. Why do I have to go first on this one? It's like the hardest <laughs> one to go first on. <laughs> no, I don't mind. So Just talking shit. All right. <laughs> Again, I'm really excited to see these men for real. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's the actual arm. Um, yeah. It's from the. Um, this is exciting. I was a little too excited. I panicked and got this haircut. <laughs> what an, an insane fuck up. My hair was fine. It was totally fine. And then two days ago, I was like, I gotta, I gotta salvage this. It's crazy that I thought the hair, like my hair was, I was like, if I fix my hair, I'll look good. <laughs> like that was the final piece of the puzzle <laughs> for, for me. There's a Dominican barbershop by my house in New York. I think I'm the first white guy that's ever been in there. I was basically Christopher Columbus of this barber shop. <laughs> and they fucked me up, dude. Don't get, if you're white, don't get a Dominican haircut. That's you end up crazy. just looking more racist. It was nice though. He kept trying to reassure me the whole time. He was like, no man, your head's good. <laughs> That's all he kept, he kept saying your head's good. I was like, oh, thank you. Whatever, fuck this haircut. How are you guys? <laughs> Look, it's good, it's good, I'm happy, it's nice. Everybody's back inside, all that shit. I don't know, yeah. I had a good, I liked COVID, I had a nice time. <laughs> I live in New York, so I left. I went back to my parents' house because I have white privilege. Okay. <laughs> Some people didn't get to leave the city, I did, because of my privilege, and I used it. You gotta use it. You know what I mean? Doesn't it feel more disrespectful to waste it? <laughs> you know? What? Then we're all just being racist for nothing? <laughs> all right. Obviously, it's a joke. But no, it's good. I went home. My parents, I haven't lived with them in over 10 years. They got old. They're old as fuck. They have milk, though. I'm back on milk. I've been fucking crushing milk lately. I got fucking milk fat this year. It's a weird time in life to have a milk renaissance. I was 33. But it was nice. I think my favorite part of the year was I, uh, I got to watch my dad watch the news. It was a rough year for my dad and the news. He's a Fox News guy. Don't oh, yeah, okay. it's fine. Also, I see you guys. Most of you have Fox News dads. How dare you deny your fathers? That's a good dad. I don't watch Fox, but that's a good dad. Fox News mom? Uh, that's bad. You don't want Fox News mom. That's a bad mom. She smokes in the house. But a Fox News dad, that's a good fucking dad. Can you imagine if you had a fucking MSNBC dad? Just some guy every night at dinner, like, we need to start focusing on renewable energy. It's like, it's like ew, dude, I didn't know dad was gay. <laughs> <laughs> talking about solar panels like a fucking lady. 
Me and my dad are straight as hell, dude. We fucking hate the environment. That's how straight we are. All we talk about is eating pussy and fracking. We hate nature. We go fishing. We don't even eat fish, dude. We just catch them and fucking... <laughs> what? No, he's good. He likes Fox. He watches so Fox. He watches it every night. Like every Fox News dad, my dad watches Fox every night until he can't. That's how long they watch. They watch every night until they get so angry they have to go to bed. My dad will watch for like two hours and then out of nowhere he'll just stand up and be like, fucking Mr. Potato Heads, trance, I'm going to bed. <laughs> this world's going to hell. <laughs> He's all about it, dude. He loves it. Like every Fox News dad, my dad watches Fox with one goal. He's just trying to get one fact. That's all he's doing. He's sitting there. He's trying to retain one piece of information that he can then relay to whoever's unlucky enough to enter the living room <laughs> while he's watching. And you'd think it'd be easy to get one fact, but every once in a while there's like a commercial for like a commemorative 9-11 gold coin <laughs> just fucking wipes their hard drive. Like, what, what was I watching? I gotta get one of those. I gotta get my hands on one of those patriotic coins. <laughs> so stupid. My dad drinks too, so he can never, he can never get a fact, <laughs> ever. That's true. You'll come in the living room. We'll be ha he's hammered watching the news every night, which is the wildest way to take in <laughs> world politics. <laughs> like just hammered on a in a recliner, like. Whoa. <laughs> it's like footage of rocket attacks in Israel. He's like, whoa. <laughs> what the hell are they doing over there? <laughs> What's these guys' problem? <laughs> but he can never get a fact. Like, he tries. He tries... He, say, he, he uses Fox News as like a PowerPoint for what he's trying to say. Like everyone, what? like we'll be eating dinner and like Hannity will be saying something. He's like, see, that, that's what I meant. <laughs> Look at that. That's me I talking. Got a, oh. I can't say it that good. I, I, I <laughs> he can never get a fact. He'll walk in the living room. He's been watching the news for three hours. He'll be like, all right, what's going on in the world? He's like, you want to know? <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> Fucking Nancy Pelosi's a bitch. <laughs> it's like, all right. all right. Settle down, dude. It's like, that was the news last... That's the news every night for my dad. They're just like breaking. Did you know Nancy Pelosi's a bitch? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I had a feeling. But like everything they say, he agrees with. He's all in. I realize, like, Fox News is basically black church for old white dudes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, literally what? everything they say, my dad just sits there like, mm-hmm. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yes, preach, Tucker. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, he gets hit with the Holy Spirit while he's watching it. <laughs> the Holy Ghost visits him. He's just like, oh, Lord, build a wall. <laughs> Can I get a wall? <laughs> what? He needs a wall. Oh, my God. My dad oh, needs a God. Oh, my God. For a guy God. who lives in central Pennsylvania. Jesus Christ. Securing the southern border. It's like an oddly oh, important tool. Oh. I don't know what he's worried about. Like, he's going to lose his job? You know? Like, some guy from Honduras is going to walk the whole way to, to Pennsylvania? Just slam a resume down on my dad's boss's desk. So you're here for the sales position? <laughs> also, there, I, I was just at the border of Arizona and Mexico. There's a wall. I had no idea. I got down there, I saw the wall. I was like, holy shit, he built it? They were like, no, it's been here. I've been here for like a century. Like, well, you gotta tell my dad. 
<laughs> he gets fired up every night. It's a crazy way to go to bed every night. Uh, just <laughs> just with his apnea mask on, fucking. <laughs> every night, you fucking caravan. <laughs> Dude, you walk it's into the stupid. living room in my house right now, my dad, he'd hit you like, Southern Border is a mess right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> but, that's it, every day. I just get on, read opinions from people I know are dumb. Like in person, I know they're dumb. I've talked to them. And I'm still reading their Twitter, their political opinions. It's great, and my, my Twitter's crazy. It's, it's half where I'm from, which is the middle of Pennsylvania, so it's, it's white trash. And then half, now, all, now I live in New York. <laughs> so it's crazy, like all, you know, I still have uncles. They all just got Twitter, they're all fucking fired up. They're having fun, dude. They all have like zero followers. They just tweet into the void. They love it, dude. They do it for the love of the game. They're like, Panera was good today. Pfft. Is onto a server that'll outlast civilization. <laughs> and then now all my new friends are literally communists from Brooklyn. So it's wild, dude. My social, like, I'll get, on, I'll get on Twitter and the first tweet I see will be someone from back home that's just like, fucking Colin Kaepernick better stand up. <laughs> like this tweet if you support the police. Share it if you're not gay. Share. <laughs> and then the next post is just one of my new woke white friends that's just like, I'm not racist. That's it. Every day for the last year, just a different white person popping up. Like, look at me. Look at this article I shared to my Instagram story. I'm not racist, right? Like, yeah, that, right. That'd be the worst one. You sure? I don't know if you know this, like, being racist isn't, like, a yes or no thing. You know what I mean? It's not like you have it or you don't have it. Like, being racist is more, it's like being hungry. You know? It's like, yeah, you're not right now. You know? It's like, yeah, you're not hungry right now, but a cheeseburger could cut you off on the highway. <laughs> I'm being hungry. Racist. We're hungry all day. <laughs> That's so stupid. The cheeseburger is Jewish in that joke. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> cheeseburger is whatever, whatever type of cheeseburger you thought it was <laughs> in your racist heart. Anyway, but that's it. I just get online, read opinions from people. The news, like other news is kind of like, this is the most divided this country has ever been. It's like, with the, like the red states and the blue states. It's like, why? Because we tweet at each other? You know we had a war, right? You know this country had a civil war? That was pretty divided. Like, at least nowadays we're communicating with each other. Back then, those guys never, they got the news like once a month. Some guy would come by on a horse and they were like, who's talking shit? The guy was like, the South is talking shit. They were like, fuck that, I don't like that. Give me my gun, I'm gonna go down there. A, a I'm, gonna month walk, later. I'm gonna walk down there for a month straight. Shoot the first fucking guy I see down there. <laughs> Oh, world, basically just the North just shooting racism out of the South. Oh, That's what happened. The North was like, South, fucking chill. And the South was like, oh, no. God. So a bunch of guys had to walk down there and shoot them a lot. And they were like, all right. We'll let them go. We're not going to be nice to them for a while. Until we find out they're good at football and then roll tide. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh yeah, Eli, Alabama. man. <laughs> I don't like uh, I don't like Alabama football. I watched I just watched this documentary on Alabama football. It's great. It's about well, it's not, I don't know. I don't know if you should say it's great, but 
It's about, it's about Alabama football. It's about when they desegregated their football team. So up until this point, Alabama football was just white. This is probably his idea. Right All right. And everybody down there was pumped on that. They would pack the stadium. Everyone would be like, look at all those whites. <laughs> Running around, catching it. And look, I'm not knocking them too hard because I still have a little bit of that in me. You know, like if a white guy catches the ball on Sunday, I'm like, oh shit, go, 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 go. <laughs> ah, they got him. <laughs> they got, got him. him. It's a tough run, a smart run. <laughs> tough run there. <laughs> but no, they took it too God. far. And uh, so the documentary focuses on that. It focuses on Bear Bryant. Bear Bryant, legendary head coach. He was the head coach that brought the first black players onto the team. So the whole documentary is like celebrating Bear Bryant. They're like, fucking way to go, Bear. You did it. What a hero. And then you find out it was 1971. <laughs> hey, yeah. well, a little late for high fives on this one, fellas. <laughs> Holy shit, 71? <laughs> like, we had been to the moon. <laughs> there were really people on the moon before Alabama had black guys in their secondary. God. God they don't understand. God. There were white corners. White cornerbacks. You understand how preposterous that is? Some of, some of you are too young to have ever even seen a white corner. They're extinct. They don't exist. There, there's two left at the San Diego Zoo. And they won't... They won't reproduce. You'll never see a white corner. But that's what happened. It wasn't like... The reason they desegregated the team, It was that's what the documentary focuses on, which is great, because it wasn't like... Oh, hey, fellas, it's 1971. Maybe we should get with the times. What happened was Alabama scheduled USC, Southern Cal. Alabama was confident. They're like, oh, white boys, are <laughs> we'll take on anybody. And then USC came down to Alabama with a bunch of black dudes from L.A. It just beat the fuck out of Alabama. <laughs> and then after the game, Bear Bryant gave, like, a speech, and he was like, hey, y'all. Come on. <laughs> that was it. It's all tough. <laughs> Everybody down there was like, yeah, we get it. We'll, we'll, we'll be right for this. If it means oh, we can win. Oh, God. He's like, hey, y'all. What? Oh, God. That's what it is. A... Like, as big as racism is in America, football. Oh, God. That's oh. true. That's true. Look, the go there's a Disney movie. Remember the Titans. Dedicated to what I just told you. The yeah, whole point of that, dude, that was one high school football season. Remember the Titans was like, it was eight weeks. You know, Literally. That whole town went from like centuries of like, don't let them in our school, to just like, oh shit, the high school team's 4-0? <laughs> Those are my brothers. <laughs> I love that movie, though. I, I loved it. I don't care how right. sick it was. I'll, I'll look. get off the topic. <laughs> the point, look, the point I'm trying to make. He's the so point I'm trying to make is if you want to get rights in America, you just got to put together a good football team. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like if the transgenders, if the transgenders got together and put together just a fucking hard nose, run it down your throat ball club. If the trans is just three yards in a cloud of dust of transgenders. If the trans, if the trans community could just somehow upset Alabama, everybody down there tomorrow would be like, "Those are some tough bitches, actually." There's some rough patches in there. That's all right. Oh my god. Oh Those my don't god. Go great either. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know how like every show and movie now is like a remake of something they just remake an old yeah. thing and just make it like more progressive and just put it out like they remade they yes. remade Ocean's 11 like a heist movie with like all gorgeous women. That movie should have been 10 minutes long. They literally should have got to the casino and just blown the security guards. <laughs> they, uh, oh, here's the keys to the safe. Take everything. I love you. 
You guys, you crazy bitches. I love you, bitches. <laughs> I just. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> that's all they make. They either make that or they make like, they make slavery movies every year. Those yeah. are for no one. <laughs> I have black friends. I was like, dude, you guys, you guys like these? They're like, no. We thought you got these were for you. It's like, no. <laughs> we all hate those. Stop making them. It's uncomfortable. Civil rights movies are good though. I like like uh, like Judas and the Black Messiah was sick. Remember the Titans is great. <laughs> yeah. Hidden Figures was good. the the movie about the black ladies at NASA, or as my dad likes to call it, Medea goes to the moon. <laughs> Whoa! 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 <laughs> that was him that said that. No! He said that as soon as he Whoa. said it. I was like, what did you fucking say? <laughs> you don't talk like that. <laughs> I know he didn't say that shit. I Some of the movies just remade shit. is more progressive. I just think it'd be funny if, like, the right started remaking. <laughs> you know what I mean? If they just start, like, conservatives. Like, there's a new Scooby Doo coming out. And it'd be funny if, like, the right remade it. It's just, like, Scooby and the gang going around ripping the wigs off of transgender people. <laughs> It's like, that's not a woman. <laughs> Some guy, I would have got away with it. <laughs> we solved the case of the Starbucks ghoul. <laughs> the Starbucks ghoul is crazy. Has enough time passed that we can, can we admit that Trump was funny? Can we finally admit that he was funny? Well, hold on. I don't, I don't like the tone of that. That's not what I'm going for here. <laughs> yeah. The great leader. <laughs> no. He was funny. Now, whether or not that's a great quality for the commander in chief, that's definitely up for debate. But he was funny. I saw it. And I lived in New York, so the whole time he was in office, I would be like, you know, something would happen. I'd show my friends. I'd be like, look at that. They'd be like, what? All right, it's funny. Like, there's nothing funny about Donald Trump. So I, don't, I don't know. During Hurricane Dorian, he was like, maybe we should nuke it. Like, that, was, that was a real suggestion from the president. The president said that. The president of the United States. He was like, hey, we got a big storm coming. You guys want me to blow it up? I was like, no, what the fuck are you talking about? I don't know. I fuck around, dude. I, do. <laughs> I don't know. Now that he's gone, I'll never, like, I'll never watch a debate ever again. Can you imagine, like, just a regular debate now? After we witnessed, like, we witnessed the GOAT. Undefeated in debates. And he never said a fact. You know how impressive that is? He was funny and he argued like a fifth grader. He was unstoppable. People would try to hit him with statistics and facts. He would just go, wrong. <laughs> like, Holy fuck, dude. How was no one prepared for this? <laughs> wrong. Go back and watch those debates. You forget how, how, good, how electric that shit was. Don't tell your friends in Austin. They'll be mad. Just get a six pack, toss on a Trump highlight video on YouTube. Good night, dude. <laughs> Why? I went back. I watched his first debate. That's like my favorite one. At the time, Trump was polling at like less than 1%. Like he was, no one liked him. If you guys like him now, you didn't back then. And I know that because my dad, I watched my dad. My dad at the time, he would like, anytime Trump even came on TV, my dad would be like, get this fucking joker. Get him off the fucking screen. <laughs> and then now my dad's like, you yeah, fucking guys can't go to the Capitol? <laughs> He's like... <laughs> <laughs> guys can't have fun anymore? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and it was because of the debates. That's what did it, dude. That's how we got Trump, these debates. And the first one is the best one. So it's a Republican primary. Everyone's up on stage, and they're all still doing <gasps> their political so shit. So like the first couple guys that talk are like, I'm from Kentucky, and I love education. And the crowd's like, nice. We didn't know what was coming. And then the next guy's like, I'm from Georgia, and I love religion. And the crowd's like, Pretty good. This is a good one. This is a heated debate. And then it finally got to Trump's turn to talk, and he was just like, 
Rand Paul is ugly? And the whole crowd was like, oh. <laughs> We didn't know you could do that in this. You can just do that as your thing. <laughs> and Rand Paul was like, all right, everybody, settle down. We're trying to have a debate here. And the whole crowd was like, shut the fuck up, Rand Paul. <laughs> ugly bitch. <laughs> And we just kept throwing dorks up on stage to make them debate Trump. It was not fair. It was mean for us to have done that to people. These guys were in politics their whole lives. And they just had to debate a fucking maniac up there who didn't give a fuck, dude. And I hate to... <laughs> it was fun to cheer for him in the debates. It was fun to cheer for him in the debates. Because he... Dude, they were going up against guys that had been in politics for like 40 years. And then he showed up to the event like, oh, fuck it. What are we talking about? <laughs> like, it was like... He had no clue. Every week he had no fucking idea. There's one debate. There's one debate. He's like in the middle of it going back and forth about the economy with Ted Cruz. They're literally talking about the economy. And in the middle of it, he's just like, Ted's wife, ugly as a dog. <laughs> Holy shit, dude. <laughs> Ted, Ted was like, I'm from Texas. You don't talk about a man's family like that. You've got a dog wife, Ted. <laughs> it was like... Oh, everyone shit. knows. I... <laughs> oh, shit, man. I told the guy he had said that. I told yeah, and a week later, Ted Cruz was on TV like, I support Donald J. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> you pussy. <laughs> I will say this. The one thing that sucked about Trump losing was, for me, was because I just figured out kind of how to do his voice. <laughs> Which, that's kind of a bummer oh. that I just... It's not hard to do Trump. It's very... All you have to do, that. Just do that. Do that a second off from where it should be in the sentence. <laughs> And then all you like, you don't have to sound like him. All you have to do is like get his cadence down. It's very easy. All you have to do is like describe something and then say you described it that way. That's it. It's every time. Like, you, what a big room this is. I walked in here. I said, wow, what a big room. <laughs> every time. Yo, that's on point, my dog. That's on point. Oh, Austin. A lot of homeless. <laughs> I walked in there and said, wow, that's a lot of homeless. <laughs> you guys got it. You got a lot of homeless. You got to. What are you guys doing about it? <laughs> Whatever you guys are doing is not working. So just, just switch. I don't know what to do either. But do something. Oh. A lot of tents. <laughs> A lot of things. Go over, but not the under. Why? <laughs> it's been making me laugh thinking about Trump, like, not so understanding why? why people are homeless. <laughs> I walked out, oh. I saw him, I said, why? Are you <laughs> <laughs> Living in tents, I could never, these guys. <laughs> but I will say this about Trump. Oh. I don't want you guys to get, I don't want to turn this into a rally. I don't want you to. <sighs> I will say this, and don't freak out. Just listen. I, will, I think it's fair to say that of all the presidents we've had, I think it's fair to say that Trump would have been the funniest one to see get shot. <laughs> what? You know? What? <laughs> what? Yeah, dude, the Patriots got fired up on that, dude. <laughs> I was having fun at this show. <laughs> no, look, I didn't even say it would be funny. I said funniest. It's a huge difference. Technically, there's a funniest of everything. There is. It doesn't make it funny, but there is, like, think of the worst thing you can think of. There's a funniest one. I'll go first. I'll think of one. <laughs> it's cool shooting. <laughs> no! None of those are funny. Zero funny. But maybe there was one where, like, the horse girl in the class, like, could sense something was coming. You know what I mean? And they were like, what's wrong? And she was like... <laughs> <laughs> what? What? <laughs> you know? This is stupid, man. <laughs> but back to what I was saying oh. about... If you had... To, what I said was true. If you had to rank them, 
from least funny to funniest assassination. <laughs> Easy number one. <laughs> For real, he'd be he'd be talking shit like when it happened. <laughs> he'd be doing a, like a rally. He'd be like, my opponent's gay. <laughs> I walked in, I saw him, I said, wow, this guy's gay. <laughs> <laughs> the shooter would be coming out and be like, sit down. <laughs> You're gay. <laughs> get hit. He'd definitely make a funny noise into the like he'd get hit and be like, ah! <laughs> <And fall. laughs> he'd fall funny. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> I will say I did. Oh my god! I did write that joke before. Uh. Biden could be added to the rankings. I don't think he would be the funniest, but the only Wait, hold on, man, hold on, hold on, man. He was like, he was like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, that's hilarious. Oh, man. The reason Biden might be the funniest <sighs> is because I think Biden's the first president you could punch assassinate. <laughs> what? What did you say? You know what I mean? Oh. Just walk right through the metal detectors and be like, Mr. President, what the fuck are you doing, dude? <laughs> <laughs> it's a body shot. Uh, a body shot? <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh my God. I'd add that joke. My dad. My God. My God. So you can't be talking about killing presidents? Oh. Like, what about Biden? He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My dad, he's a good, good guy. He's an alcoholic. But he's good. He's like a good, he's a good alcoholic. He's not hurting anybody. But every once in a while, he always has an excuse while he's drinking. That's what's funny about it. Like, he can never just get hammered and be like, yeah, I got fucked up. Like, it's always... Like, you'll see him on, like, a Monday. You'll be like, damn, it's Monday? You're getting fucked up? He's like, it's fucking... It's Monday Night Football. <laughs> Have a couple of drinks. Jeez. You'll see him on, like, a Tuesday. You'll be like, damn, it's Tuesday? You're getting fucked up? He's like, it's fucking... There's no football. <laughs> what the hell? And then my sister does heroin. And, uh... And that one, we're like, you do need to... You know... You need to stop doing that. Which sucks for yeah. her, because if she played guitar, everybody would be like, ah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. But instead, she's a hairdresser, so. It's not as cool. Relax. It's my family. It's my family. Don't worry about it. Actually, based on this crowd, I'm sure it's actually a lot of your guys' <laughs> families. Oh, and that's all right. Oh, We're allowed to talk about it. My sister... So she was doing heroin. We had to have an intervention for her. She lived out in Pittsburgh. We live in the middle of Pennsylvania, so we had to trick her to come home. You got to trick them. I don't know if you know these guys. They're not just fucking stopping by. They're very busy. They're the busiest people. They get a bad rap for being lazy because they take a lot of naps. But if they're awake, they're fucking they're very busy. They're scurrying around, dude, doing quests. That's what they do. If you do heroin long enough, you run out of money. You got to start doing quests. <laughs> you know? It's, you know. What? It's like a fucked up game of Zelda. Every day, you just wake up to a new quest. It's like, you need to gather copper. Like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know, find a scrapyard. It sounds That's nice. Crazy. I wish I got quests. But eventually, the quests get pretty dark. Scrapyard, that's like level one. <laughs> Towards the end, the quests are, you need to get titty fucked behind the Home Depot. That's <laughs> 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 when it's time for a change. <laughs> so we had to come up with a plan to trick her to come home for the intervention. The plan we came up with was we told her that we had won tickets to go to Six Flags. <laughs> And it worked. She called back. She's like, all right, I'll be there. She got on the first bus. It's like a seven-hour bus ride. It's nothing to them, dude. <laughs> nothing. If you take heroin, every bus is a bullet train. 
<laughs> it's a five minute ride, tops. <laughs> anyway, so the plan was pick my sister up from the bus stop, not take her to Six Flags, take her, take her to a hotel where we we're gonna have an intervention. I didn't want to start the intervention with like a lack of trust. So I took her to Six Flags the day of her intervention. The more, that day, she and I went to Six Flags together. And I thought that was a nice gesture, but it turns out intervention is supposed to be rock bottom. You know what I mean? Like intervention is supposed oh. to be the worst day of your life. Not like you're tired from easily the best day. Oh my Humanly God. I mean, she took heroin and rode roller coasters. It was, dude, it was impossible. We sat her down, we were like, you better fucking change your life. She's like, oh, I'm going back tomorrow. We are like, no. <laughs> and I was with her. She was, she was fucked up. If you know anyone from Pittsburgh, you know what she was wearing. She was wearing a Steelers jersey and pajama pants. <laughs> Steelers pajama pants. She dusted off her finest Heinz Ward for the occasion. <laughs> Oh. So we get in there. There's a water park there. We didn't know. They added that. We haven't been there since we were kids. We get in there. There's one of those water slides. It's just like a fucking straight drop. Like no sides on it, no raft, just by yourself. She looks at it. She's like, I want to go up on that one. <laughs> I was like, yeah, all right. Yeah, fuck it. You know? I knew she was going to rehab like that night. So I was like, yeah, go get this one in. You're, gonna... You're about to have a rough couple months here. <laughs> this is going to be. Also, I figured they would stop her. She was wearing a Steelers jersey and pajama pants, trying to get on a water slide. All they did was make her take her fucking Crocs off. <laughs> her yellow Crocs. So she's climbing up this ladder. She gets to the top of this fucking giant water slide. And you know how like when it's your turn next on a water ride, you gotta like lay there in that water and like wait to go? She, she nodded off. <laughs> she took a nap oh, really? up at the top like a Dracula. <laughs> laying in front of some high school lifeguard that's like, uh, ma'am, it's your turn. Uh, <laughs> he just sent her down, dude, asleep, just, poof, just <laughs> flying down this thing, dude. She hit, there's a ramp at the end. She hit her. We all got to watch her wake up in air. <laughs> she did the whole fucking... You know, I don't know how that wasn't fucking rock bottom. Oh, so he woke shit, up man. in air. <laughs> anyway, don't be sad about it. She's good. She did go to rehab. And that's good. Yeah, she's done. She stopped using it. She's sober. She's all good. She's two years clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. She did, uh, she did get cancer, not. though. So. And COVID. <laughs> cancer and COVID. Bam, bam, ba, da, <laughs> so yeah, I'll tell you what, this was cool. I, got, I was with her, I lit, she was at home. She went back to my parents, because when you have cancer and COVID, you gotta go home. <laughs> you have to go home, you can't keep hanging out. <laughs> but no, I was with her, it was crazy. She, this year she beat heroin, cancer, and COVID. It was, it was like living with fucking Rocky. <laughs> It was crazy, dude. Every week, my whole family was like, give up. You're never going to win this. She's like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> just kept, just kept winning. No way. When she got oh COVID, I was like, all right, you, you're definitely dead. She's like, hey, yo, COVID. <laughs> like, I ain't hear no bell. <laughs> just fucking wailed on, dude. <laughs> yeah, she's got oh a hell of a God, chin. Man. Yo, Hell shit. of a chin on my sister, and that's this uh, guy what, is hilarious, man. What, what better quality could you ask for in a human? <laughs> anyway, damn, dude, fuck that music across the street, dude. That fucking bothers me. I'm an old man now. Turn it down. <laughs> Turn it down. What is that? Rap? Turn it off. Gotta talk about my sister doing heroin over here. <laughs> this has been making me laugh. I've been thinking about like the first time, uh, like uh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I do comedy a lot, and every once in a while, you can hear music from another room, and it's like, damn, dude, music's so much better than comedy. <laughs> every time I hear music, I'm like, fuck, dude, that shit crushes what I do. 
<laughs> Some fucking idiot dressed like Cam Newton, press and play. <laughs> it's so much better than this. Like, you guys want to hear about my problems? <laughs> this guy's like, take Molly, finger someone. I'm going to press play. Finger you guys someone. do you. <laughs> do you. <laughs> Fuck, they're having so much fun over there. Yo, this, his Get out of here, you motherfucker. Go dance. I knew you wanted to dance. That guy wanted to dance all night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like my family. It's a good family. I had to go to my niece's uh, seventh and eighth grade girls volleyball match recently. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, dude. Shut up. Just relax. I don't want to fuck this. earlier. But if you ever want to get out of something, that's all you have to do. Like if your friend, like, do you want to come to our son's t-ball game? Be like, what grade are the kids in? <laughs> and then no matter what they say, go, oh. <laughs> Fourth? <laughs> yeah. No, I went to this fucking kids volleyball match. Can we knock it off with volleyball shorts on little kids? It's weird. It's gross, dude. Just get them gym shorts. That's all. <laughs> no, dude, it's gross. Because, you know, it's just me and the other uncles. Up in, the, up in the bleachers, kind of making eye contact with each other, like... <laughs> Bro, are you seeing this? <laughs> Such a funny way to just destroy a show. <laughs> just, like the, just right at the very end, be like, aren't kids hot? <laughs> you know, give it up for Trump. Aren't kids hot? <laughs> <laughs> no, I am. I truly am serious about the gym shorts, though. It's weird. And so I got home from this fucking volleyball match. My roommate, his girlfriend, played college volleyball. So I'm very excited to like shit on volleyball whenever I saw it in the other video. So I get in there and I was like, "Yo, volleyball is fucking. That's a weird culture. Get them fucking shorts. Get them gym shorts. Dude. The shorts they're wearing is gross." And she was like, "No, we need those shorts for speed." <laughs> on the court. And I was like, uh, I, I know that's not true. I watched the NBA. <laughs> None of you are moving as fast as like a ref. <laughs> and those guys are wearing like slacks. <laughs> Dress shoes for some reason. She was like, no, we need those shorts. The tight shorts, they're essential. She compared them to like a helmet in football. I was like, I know they're not essential because I Googled the, uh, the Special Olympics volleyball team. All, the, all of a sudden, those shorts weren't so essential for them. What's that about? How baggy do you think they're? They looked like the fucking and one mixtape out there. <laughs> Offensively baggy is how I would describe all of their attires. We're all adults. We, we, can, this, we all agree the Special Olympics is a good, it's a good program. I just, it's great. I just feel like the guy who came up with it had to be like a real risk taker. You know what I mean? That's a wild thing to suggest for the first time. Some guy in a board meeting, like, I got an idea. We should be racing these motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> like, what'd you say? Like, fucking uh, town over said they had the fastest ones. <laughs> the town so over. Settle it, you know. <laughs> I forgot what this was like for the party. I'm not making fun of the Olympians. The concept is wild. It's a wild. Like if your best friend invented the Special Olympics and told you about it first, you'd be like, "Don't ever tell anybody that." <laughs> Who the fuck are we gonna tell that to? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? Pole vault? <laughs> I actually, personally, I actually volunteered and coached with the Special Olympics for a little while, so, you know, what'd you guys do? No, don't clap. Please. I did it for those kids. <laughs> no, <okay. laughs> Oh, so that's where I came from. Okay. No. <laughs> that's, that's I look like this, from. so 
me coaching the Special Olympics. I was like a fucking double agent. <laughs> no one knew whose side I was on, dude. The player, chaperone, no one knew. I'd be standing there coaching, holding a clipboard with five dudes that looked exactly like me. You know, see the coaches from the other team looking over like, I think they got, I think they're fucking letting one of them coach. <laughs> Yeah. No, I did coach the Special Olympics for a little while, and it's fun. That's another thing you're allowed to talk about. It's happy. Everyone there is sportsmanship. It's, it is funny. Don't let anyone tell you it's not funny, dude. I was there. It, it, everyone there is laughing. It's fun. I coached basketball. Kids would catch the ball, just fucking, <laughs> just fucking launch it into the bleachers. People would be like, what the fuck are you doing out there? Like, I don't know. <laughs> my whole team ruled. Every every dude on my team was the, they were the funniest. They fucking they were bros. They're bros, dude. My whole team loved two things. They loved tits. They do. I don't know if you know these guys, dude. They fucking love the ladies. They love the ladies, and they love John Cena. That's it. That was the news every day. We'd be in the huddle. They'd be like, there's a lot of ladies here tonight. I was like, ooh, yeah. They'd be like, what do you think John Cena's up to? <laughs> oh, you're going to have to get way worse before you meet him. <laughs> Cena, John Cena's like the angel of death for those guys. I told, I told my guys, I was like, you see Cena coming, you get the fuck out of there. <laughs> He's taking souls with him. <laughs> Every year, Hooters would sponsor our one basketball tournament. All right, so every year Hooters would bring like three or four waitresses and they would present like a big cardboard check donation to the Special Olympics. As soon as the girls entered the gym, the game changed <laughs> entirely, dude. It went from like hugs and sportsmanship to just like dudes got competitive, like very competitive. <laughs> Fucking ripping down rebounds, just hitting layups. And, <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end of the game, there'd be a hug line, you know, <laughs> between the waitresses and the players. And yeah, that went about exactly, exactly how you would imagine that went. We had to break out the fucking jaws of life, dude. My boys, my boys are ragdolling those young sluts. <laughs> and I'm not knocking the, the, the players. They were totally in the right. The girls were hot. The waitresses, like every year I would sneak into the hug line myself. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think I'm going to get out of here, guys. Thank you guys very much. Oh. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. Oh, that is, oh, man. That man is hilarious. Oh. My God, man. That was hilarious, man. This dude is Fun. I need to see if I got the other file. Man. Where's the other file at? Oh, where is it at? Where is it? Oh, I was right here. Okay, man. Um, yo, I, I really do appreciate you guys watching this. If you guys actually seen this video all the way through, again, I do appreciate it. And again, I really am sorry for the weird cut. Um, this whole this setup I have going on. Plan on trying to update it probably sometime next year. But again, it's still in the making. But oh, that was hilarious. Oh. So, if you guys really enjoyed this reaction today, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, and share. Let me know in the comment section down below what you want to react to next. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, my name is Nova, and I'll see you guys next episode. Peace!